Hello everyone and welcome back to Shelf Life. This is Simran and this is my podcast Shelf Life where we talk about books, the philosophies, but most importantly, our personal relationship with a book. Now I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode which was about all things poetry. We discussed a lot of poems and we, you know, just recited our favorite ones. I mean, I recited my favorite ones and I hope you guys like that. If you haven't seen that episode, just, you know, go on over to my channel and check that out. It it was a really fun one. Like I had so much fun filming that. Um I just love poetry episodes, I think maybe even more than the reviews, but <laughs> that would just be um yeah, that would be pushing it. But this week we have another really 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 cool book. Um it's a pretty old one. I think it's relatively old. It was published in 2002 and you might have already guessed by the title. It is none other than The Tragedy Master Rohington Mysteries third novel and hopefully not his final novel but it it seems like that it's it's pretty weird because he hasn't published another one in like what it's been a good 15 years now i think um possibly more than that so yeah it, it's been pretty crazy i think he has written short stories in the interval but um as far as i know no novels by his side and he's written only three novels um till now the first one was obviously such a long journey the second one was a fine balance and the third one is the one that we're going to be discussing today it's called family matters now a little controversy around this book is that i mean it's not controversy but it's just literary gossip um is that it is actually probably um one of mystery's um lesser acclaimed novels i think it wasn't respected as much or appreciated enough um compared to his other two novels i mean you know this is also just like it's not even a fair comment because even this one was nominated for the booker prize so <laughs> lesser um lesser acclaimed on a very like vague scale okay um compared to the the brilliance of the other two novels probably so this is just you know one inch less brilliant i don't know i don't know what i'm saying today has been a really long day and i'm filming this literally at the fag end of the day and i am so exhausted but i really really wanted to talk about this book because i genuinely loved it now before we get into the book i want to tell you a little bit uh about something it's a story that i have and i want you guys to listen closely okay so there's a friend of mine whom i mostly communicate with through letters we have this correspondence going on and it's been there for a while um and it, it's quite um I feel that those letters are quite poetic. It's very um existential and also at the same time it it reflects our love of idealism and um our inherent romance, I would say. Um it's reflective of all of that. It's reflective of our demons, our our confusions, our conflicts, everything. But basically, um in most of these letters and this is something we've both noticed and it's not something we do um you know on purpose it's not something that we had meant to happen but um what ended up happening is that a lot of our letters had the element of nostalgia a and b it also had this sense of fear um it it addressed a fear of aging and that's something that kept coming up again and again and we both sort of noticed it i think and we actually even had a conversation about it um because I, neither of us understood why exactly we would have that fear of aging um i mean 
it makes no sense you're so young i'm i'm 20 years old what is there to fear about aging aging seems like such a far off abstract concept right now right i mean if there's any younger folks uh <laughs> listening you would relate how how why and how would you be worried about your bones growing um bones getting brittle or your skin growing old and saggy and becoming you know full of scars and marks and all those things but it just so happened that in conversation that would just keep coming up and i really don't know why that is like i don't know why we spoke about it so much and and why it was out of fear but i think i would like to think that it's a little bit universal i'd like to think that this is something that a lot of people think about because for most of us our default um thinking pattern usually is either nostalgia for what is gone what is past um what is either lost or forgotten or or given away or it is this obsession with just the natural process of life which is to grow old eventually and then to die but these are usually the two thinking patterns that we get into and and i think that is what evokes the most uh amount of fear or celebration or any kind of emotion intense emotion that is what it evokes in us so long story short the reason why i mentioned this is because this is essentially what mystery's third novel is all about it's about these two very very vital and crucial and essential aspects of living of of being alive of of being a part of the world and and not living in some isolated corner at the end of society what happens when you live what happens when you're alive and have connections and meet people is that you either are nostalgic for what has left you for what you have left left for what you have grown out of or you are fearful of what comes or what is meant to come and mystery talks about both of them in in such such a beautiful way but you know more on that later first let me give you a little bit of a brief about the book and about the story about the characters in case you haven't read it if you have well done this is a really um wonderful book and i just it's a pretty book big book as well book book <laughs> big book uh so if you have read it kudos to you for that um rohington mystery's family matters is a pretty simple story like most of his other stories but what differentiates it from the others is that it's it is not set in some you know grand um and i don't mean that in a necessarily positive way it's not set in any grand era or a period a time period it's not like it's set in the 70s emergency era or in um the conflict with bangladesh it's not set in any the conflict that led to bangladesh sorry uh, it's not set in any of those time periods it's set in in a very random time possibly closer to 2002 which is when it was published but it, it it's set in that and and what is most important to mystery and what he is trying to convey through this book is um the frailty of human emotion basically because all of his characters and i'll tell you about the characters it, it has at the center of it one really old man okay his name is naiman vakil he is a parsi and he lives in bombay and he lives with his two step children jalan kumi and he is old he knows he is old um and he knows that he has lived a pretty full life because when he looks back at it he is happy he is content and 
pretty much satisfied with where he is. Um, he is showing the first symptoms of Parkinson's disease, but it's not really very, doesn't take up too much of his time or energy. He goes on walks and he deals with two stepchildren who are extremely annoyed with him, you know, literally all day long because they have to take care of him. It, it's Jal and Kumi are um, unmarried siblings who live together with their stepfather. Their mother is no more. Um, and Nariman is a pretty cool guy. He is just like any other regular old man. The story sets in when Nariman uh, has a fall and and that is because of his Parkinson's disease and the progression of the disease. Um, and what happens is that he has to be taken care of now uh, more than just, you know, feeding him and, and giving him a roof to live under. He has to be fed and he has to be taken to the toilet, whatever. It, it's a whole process now because of his disease and its progression um, and when that happens Jal and Kumi are not willing to take care of him and they kind of put it off they kind of um, send him to live with his other daughter who, whose name is Roxana. Now Roxana lives with her husband Yezad and their two children Murad and Jehangir and they are not very financially able so they do have a lot of difficulties economically, but they're pretty tight as a family and they're really good. And Yazad is this happy-go-lucky guy who's really completely like Nariman. And they get along because of that jovial nature that they have. And they completely, you know, despise any sort of tradition or religiosity, but... They're very open to life and what it brings. Basically, this is the premise of the story. Okay, and and what happens with the fall is that the se the sequence of events sort of um, sets in. Like that, you know, I don't know, there's a word for it that usually writers use when they're talking about that one turning point in a story where everything sort of... Um, starts like the exposition is done and everything sort of sets in and and characters are coming into their own and they're probably fighting or not fighting whatever but that is that moment that fall is that moment and I think all of us have that turning point in our lives we have that one moment that we can look back on and say that's it that's when my life started or that's when my life went to hell <laughs> or that's when um, that's when I knew that I met the love of my life probably you know it, it, it's all it's all there like it's all um, it's all in our head like we know exactly what it is and usually we see these moments in retrospect because where we are at that point where we are at this point is probably very, very far from where we were when that turning point happened. And maybe that difference is not something we're totally comfortable with. But moving forward with the story, right, what happens is that it comes back to Mystery's uh, favorite themes, which is poverty and his 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 absolute uh, drive like this this mad drive that he has as a writer to depict the the realness the reality of India and in possibly just what you don't really read about in books and he takes a dig at Salman Rushdie as well in the book okay this is very famous if you read any um, like analysis for this book you will find this one paragraph that keeps coming up which is where he says that he basically says that writers like Salman Rushdie who wrote Midnight Children and many other wonderful books they have this tendency to exoticize India and the Indian story and the Indian narrative they basically talk about how there's 
magical realism and and people are imaginative and they cook up stories and mythical stories and there's so much folklore and blah 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 obviously that's great but they kind of shy away from the actual nitty gritties of this country's story which is the fact that there is so much po- poverty that so many people have barely enough to get by they don't have they don't even have the time to dream i mean they're literally just living meal uh to meal and mystery has this mad drive to get that realness out and to put it on paper and to tell you you know what this might be extremely uncomfortable to, for you to read and you probably might have never read something like this but you know what here it is you better read it you better deal with it and you better deal with the emotions that come up when you read it and i always say this like reading mystery is like an exercise in confronting tragedy <laughs> because every time i read like either a short story from him or i've read his novels there are so many emotions that come up and you know i i realize why that is it's because he is being so honest with his craft with his story and he i remember he he's said it in one of his interviews i think that he doesn't care about writing clever books he cares about writing honest books he just wants to write something honestly and i think that's so so interesting like i remember i was having this conversation with a friend of mine about something related to work okay and about how when you work a capitalist job right when you work for this corporate company or something of that sort what they care about is you churning stuff out constantly right you doing your work and you you showing up and they also care about um being better than everybody else they care about how you deal with competition and how you beat the competition and i remember being very frustrated with this whole process and just there was this one point where i was so frustrated that i just you know yelled while i was talking to my friend i just said you know is there no prize for being sincere is there no award for being sincere because i think that's all i'm good at i'm good at being sincere i'm not i might not be great at beating competition i might not be great at being very innovative or or being ingenious or being original but i am sincere and i think i i get into this discussion with myself a lot where wherein i'm like i'm i'm really trying to navigate this space of what is demanded of me and what i can produce but coming back to the story this is what mystery is trying to give out as well he is being sincere and a lot of people criticize sometimes uh the fact that his stories get really sad and they get really dramatic and they get to the core of just tragedy in fact one of the crit- one of the critiques uh not the critiques one of the critics actually mentioned this about his work they said that mystery plays like a big god who is uh signing off all his characters to doom and i thought that was so interesting you know positioning mystery as a big god who is just really bad and he's signing off his characters to do my thought that was so clever but it's true i think you might one might look at it that way because his language again his prose is so simple right there's no fancy words there's no um lyricism as one might put it um it's just simple prose it, it's simple elegant prose and you are just forced to look at char- these characters like they might be your everyday characters like for example in family matters um you get like you get an insight into 
all the so called supporting characters as well for example uh yezad's boss mr kapoor is a very influential character in the whole book i mean he sort of brings in that element of nostalgia because he's a man who keeps talking about bombay's past he keeps talking about he he collects uh portraits or or photographs of bombay taken before it became mumbai before it was overcome by you know capitalism and and nationalistic parties and all of these things he he collects these photos and he keeps them with himself and he takes great pride in in remembering bombay from another time and he passes that on to yazad as well and i think he he is the one who kind of brings in that element of nostalgia to the story and again there's another character who is um uh, you know she's her name is vili cardmaster who lives in the same building as roxana and yazad and again she has a very interesting story to tell as well there's another man who by the name who goes by the name vilas rani his job is to sit at a shop and write letters to um uh, people i mean i'm not saying that right he sort of pens letters in different languages um and usually these letters are recited by migrants who are working in bombay and they want to send letters back home so he basically writes those letters down for them and um uh, and he gives it back so that they can send it to him basically so usually you know poor laborers who are working in bombay and who possibly don't know how to write they go to him and he writes those letters for them so he is another character in the book who's so interesting and he is just there you you get to see into their minds you get to live in their shoes sort of and um you know in everyday life you won't even probably think about these people right why would you think about um the owner of a sports goods store right why would you think about a shopkeeper who writes letters why would you think about your neighbor who is an old spinster <laughs> that's how she's described in the book and and she um basically bets on cards and these gambling systems that are built up illegally so he sort of brings you these characters and he brings you quote and quote ordinary and he forces you to find some sort of magic in them and the thing is that when you mix these two <laughs> really contrasting um elements ordinariness and magic what can happen is just it can either go to an extreme of doom and tragedy or it can go to the other extreme which is just infinite wisdom and and enlightenment and you find something so so um profound but are you willing to take that risk are you willing to be ordinary but have that magic inside you and harness it and bring it out so the people can see are you willing to put that um to take that risk and to put yourself on the line and i think it's very interesting i i feel like that's what rohington mystery is trying to tell us as well he's trying to say that you might be ordinary you might be like any of these characters you might be just as messed up you might be making the same kind of mistakes but are you willing to make those mistakes and to see where that takes you now remember they can take you to hell they can ruin your life and you could possibly end up losing everything or you could i don't know maybe gain everything you could reach enlightenment you could achieve salvation moksha whatever you want to call it that is the risk of living that is the chances that that is the chance you take 
so it's a pretty deep question i feel right? it's a pretty deep thing to you know put in a book <laughs> in all your books but it's so so interesting to come across that theme again and again in his stories and and find yourself at odds with it but i just i love that and again this is a really wonderful book and i think one of the good things about this book is that it's actually one of his optimistic books i think relatively optimistic in my opinion um it i mean i don't want to give any spoilers but it, it it sort of has a little bit of a less tragic ending <laughs> than his other books so that's a good thing if um any mystery fans are listening and they haven't read this book yet um yeah and and again that element of nostalgia and aging again two really contrasting elements right one is a love for the past one is an obsession with the future but when you put those two together it could go either way you could lose your mind you could be wrestling with the past and possibly trying too hard to hold on to the future which is what happens to yazad he ends up um holding the future in a spam and crushing it and and holding on so tightly that it has no space to breathe or you could be like Naiman who just lives in his past and is tortured by it um to the point where he is unable to differentiate between what is and what isn't that could happen or something completely different could happen you could just find some sense of a balance if there is one you could find the magic in the madness or you could learn to live with it <laughs> just like that but i feel like the the inherent sadness in rohington's mystery right i think it comes from this aspect that he doesn't ever really delve too deep on the uh the non tragic outcome of mixing these contrasting elements he he doesn't honestly speaking you don't really know what yezad or naiman would be like if they hadn't been so obsessed with the past or the future you don't you you really don't i mean i think that's that's a testament to how good the narrative is and how good the story is and how well it's been built up because you feel like this is how these characters were destined to play out this is how it was supposed to happen i mean it couldn't have happened any other way but it's interesting to think maybe it could have right and what would go differently how would you do things differently would you do them differently i don't know i mean i don't want to put myself in mystery characters because they are who something else but if i did if i had to put myself there i really don't know would you be a victim of fate would you leave it up to god or would you try to take things in your own hand which could eventually mean that you could fail there's a very high possibility of failure there if you attempt to take things on in your own mat in your own hands but i don't know what would you do what can any of us do <laughs> is it fate is it god is it our own selves but yeah these are all things you can think about and i'm going to leave you guys here uh if you haven't read the book please do it is an absolute masterpiece and i think you will find it even more interesting than his other books i definitely did i thought it was very uh very unique i i felt like it was very not mystery but also mystery <laughs> at the same time so check it out let me know how it goes and 
I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a really, really good weekend and a really good week ahead. See you guys later.